Hello, everyone. Today, I have a very interesting episode. I would like to share with you the mistakes that you should know before boarding your flight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine this, you're about to start your trip, maybe for business, to meet your friends or family, or maybe to go for an adventure. Whatever the reason, you feel the excitement as you go to the airport. There's always a little thrill that comes when you get there, bags in hand, right before the takeoff. But then, as you try to check in, you're told that you won't be flying that day. Some minor mistake that you didn't catch is keeping you from boarding your flight, and now you don't know what to do. And that usually means shelling money for another flight, especially if you didn't find out the mistake until you're there at the airport. Here are the mistakes that you should watch for and make sure you won't do this or else you won't be able to board. Let's start. Number one, flying on a passport that expires within six months. A common mistake of flyers is believing that they could fly internationally as long as their passport is valid. Actually, the rule is that passports need to be valid at least six months after your final day of travel. So even if your passport doesn't expire for another few months, let's say three months, you still won't be allowed to get on the plane. TSA, Transportation Security Administration, will reject you in security. Airline personnel and gate agents at the airport strictly go by the rule book when verifying information before letting the passengers board for countries that need visa. In addition, 26 European countries need passports to be valid for three months after the date of your departure. It also helps in finding out if the country that you're going to, even for a layover, needs a visa. Because if it does, it's altogether a different story. It requires a lot of red tape and a lot of paperwork before you're permitted to board your flight. Airlines are accountable for letting a passenger fly without proper documentation. So the officials take their job very, very seriously. In other words, do your job well in advance and don't wait for that gate official to remind you that your documents are inefficient or is not correct. Traveling abroad comes with a few considerations to remember. Almost all countries require at least six months of remaining validity on your passport. And some, like South Africa, tack on stipulation that there need to be at least two consecutive blank pages on your passport. Number two, name on your ticket does not match the name on the passport when you book. It might not seem to be a big deal, but passengers' names need to be correct. The ticket and the passport must match exactly. Nicknames, maiden names versus married names are all the reasons why the airlines can deny boarding. Even customers whose names have been off just by one letter have been prevented from boarding. If you notice an error on your ticket within 24 hours of booking, it can be fixed pretty easily. But if you catch it later than that, you have to call your travel agent or the airline as soon as you can. Some airlines can fix the issue easily, but it gets more complicated if you have more than one airline on the ticket. When that happens, customers might have to book a costlier ticket without a guarantee of a refund. And the moral lesson is, triple check all the names on the ticket to ensure that it's 100% correct. Number three, not checking your visa requirements of your destination. Every country has its own visa requirements. For Asians, if your country is a member of the ASEAN, you don't need a visa to travel to ASEAN member countries. Now, if you're American, Many don't require Americans to have a visa for stays up to 90 days, but others do. So it's easy to get confused and think that you just need a passport when you should have applied for a visa before you left. However, there are times that scenarios can be different and difficult due to the fact that visas vary from country to country, and passengers often book connecting flights in other nations to get to their destinations. Some people have even been denied by authorities halfway through their trip for not having the correct visa. So whenever you're going to fly internationally, well in advance of your trip, contact the embassy or the consulate of your destination country and determine its immigration requirements, even for layovers. We go to number four, checking in at the airport too late to board. When getting to the airport to check in before your flight, some says two hours before your flight is a good time to be there. 
others to say one. To be safe, be there at least two hours before your flight or even three. There's an actual reason you need to ensure you check in early. Because even if you get to the check-in desk with enough time to get through security and the gate, you still might not be able to check in. Remember this, the government requires all airlines to close the manifest and submit it for review one hour prior to departure. So if you have arrived late and have not checked in, the airline can't reopen the manifest to let you on, even if it's just a matter of time. The airline has no way to check the passenger in once the manifest has already been closed. So the best way to do is checking online 24 hours before departure and printing your boarding pass at home or getting it on the booking app. Number five, forgetting to check the airline carry-on restrictions. Rules for what you can and cannot bring in your carry-on luggage can change quickly and depends on the countries you're flying to. Before you pack your carry-on, double-check the size, the weight, and permitted items regulations so that everything you want to fly with you, in fact, makes it to your destination. Number six, planning a too tight connection. Online travel agencies and airlines occasionally sell impossibly tight connections. But beware, while the booking system might say that it's okay to have a 45-minute window, it's often not. You need to give yourself a little bit more time in between flights, especially if you know that you'll go through immigration at a layover. For me, I personally don't want to get rushed and stressed. I choose to have at least two to three hours waiting time between flights. Then I can go shopping or I can just read a book and relax because you really wouldn't know if your initial flight will be delayed. And usually it is. So ample time between connections is very crucial. Number seven, putting too much trust on your boarding pass. When you're issued a boarding pass, it will typically list the gate number where you will board your flight. Oftentimes, these gate numbers change and will be updated on the departure board instead. Now remember this, always check the departure board often and listen for announcements. If you check the gate number too close to boarding time and it switched to the other side of the airport, then prepare to run. We go to number eight, failing to carry important documents. Do not forget to pack photocopies of your passport, credit cards, visa, and other documents related to your trip, especially if you're heading overseas. The worst case is when you get into an accident, God forbid, lose your baggage or experience theft during your travel, all these will ruin your potentially happy trip and turn it into a sad one. So you need all these documents. Also, share the soft and hard copies of your essential documents with a reliable friend or family member. I just hope that the situation to ask for those documents would never arise. We go to number nine, losing track of time. Many passengers have a tendency to get swayed by those duty-free shops, airport lounges with cozy seats and tempting meals and drinks at the airport. Indulging in a little bit of shopping and leisure is good but not at the cost of losing track of time, especially local time. After planning for that trip to the desired destination, paying a heavy airfare and other travel expenses in advance, nobody wants to hear, sorry ma'am, the gate is closed. <coughs> know that the airlines need to close their gate 20 to 30 minutes before actual departure because they need to sort out the paperwork and finish other odd duties before they fly. Avoid this bad situation by being smart and aware of every ticking second. We go to number 10, thinking that the airline will never lose your luggage. Let's hope it does not happen, but there's always a chance that it will. And if it does, you will be glad that you planned ahead. Place your phone number and address inside your bag or your luggage so that the airlines can easily contact you. Also, place a colorful ribbon or a tag that can easily be identified on your bag to prevent it from being mistakenly snatched by a passenger who's in a hurry. My suggestion, don't use a black luggage because it's very common. Use pink, blue, green, or even yellow colored luggage. Or better yet, buy a luggage suitcase cover so you can easily identify your suitcase. We go to number 11, packing too much. One of the common mistakes of first-time flyers is not packing their baggage correctly. 
Often they pack more things to make their long vacation more comfortable. But in reality, it's otherwise. Every domestic airline has their baggage allowances policy. If you're flying for the first time, you must go through all these baggage allowances policies from their official website and read all the terms and conditions. These include the allowed items, maximum weight, maximum size, maximum weight and dimensions of your luggage in order for them to pass through security. Almost all airlines have weight restrictions on luggage. The amount you're allowed to bring depends on the airlines, your destination, and your ticket price. It's worth purchasing a luggage scale and weighing your luggage before you arrive at the airport, or else you risk of getting slapped with excess baggage fees, which can often cost you hundreds of dollars. We go to the last, number 12, making jokes about terrorism, drugs, serious illnesses, or bombs. Airport security is taken very, very seriously. And for a good reason. They want everyone to be safe. Joking about these matters, about bombs, about terrorism, about illnesses, is not only immature, but it can land you in some serious hot water. Security officials have to take the joke very seriously, and you could be detained for questioning and miss your flight. Or even worse, get slapped with a big fine and charged with a criminal offense. So never, never joke about bombs, serious illnesses, terrorism, and even drugs. So there, I gave you 12 mistakes that you should know before boarding your flight. So remember this whenever you travel, okay? If you have any questions or suggestions or tips that you want to add, just put it in the comments below. Again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sharing your time. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Just click on the subscribe button, click the all, so that you will be notified every time I post a new video. Okay? Thank you again, ha! I'll see you on my next video. Ingat kayo and always stay safe. Bye! Hello! Hi, Tweet Yes. Hello everyone! Today I'm going to discuss a very important topic that you should know before boarding your flight. And this is mistakes that you should know before boarding your flight. Nick, hi! Here are the mistakes that you should watch. Here are the mistakes that you should watch for. Here are the mistakes that you should watch for. that you should watch. Here are the mistakes that you should 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 <laughs> Here are the mistakes. Here are the shoot shoot shoot. Here are the mistakes. Boss. Here. Here are the mistakes. Alam ko oras. Let's go. Go. Here are the mistakes. Sorry. Here are the mistakes that you should shoot 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 kasi. Here are the mistakes that you should watch for and make sure you don't do this or else you won't be able to board. Bye!